Hello everyone, welcome to the Hospitality and Catering presentation. This introduction was specially prepared for you to understand the requirements of the WJAC Level 1 and 2 Hospitality and Catering course. This is a vocational award in hospitality and catering and has been designed to support learners in schools and colleges who are interested in cooking and want to learn about this vocational sector and the potential it can offer them for their careers or further study. The aim of the Hospitality and Catering Award is to enable students to gain a good foundation of knowledge, understanding and skills required by the hospitality and catering industry. You will have the opportunity to develop a variety of skills, including food preparation, cooking and organisational skills, time management, planning, communication and also problem solving. Success in this course will enable you to develop onto further training if you decide to choose a career in this industry. The Hospitality and Catering course is a two-year course taught in two units. Unit 1 taught in Year 10 is titled The Hospitality and Catering Industry. It's a theory exam which you will be taking in the summer and it should take you roughly an hour and 30 minutes and it is worth 40% of your final grade. This exam is also externally assessed. Unit 2 is taught in Year 11, is your practical exam and controlled assessment or known as the coursework. The controlled assessment should take you nine hours and the practical exam two and a half hours, both of which are worth 60% of your final grade and they are both also internally assessed. The grades that you will be given are from level one pass, level two pass, mm -hmm. level two merit, level two distinction or level two distinction plus being the highest. Unit 2 is taught in Year 11, as discussed, but we're going to go into a bit more detail about Unit 1, which is what you'll be taught in Year 10. The hospitality and catering industry. The topics that you'll be reviewing include the hospitality and catering industry, job requirements and working conditions, factors affecting the success of hospitality and catering providers, the operation of the kitchen, the operation of the front of house, meeting customer requirements, the health and safety responsibilities of employers and employees, risks and control measures for personal safety in hospitality and catering, food related causes of ill health, food related allergies and intolerances, food and safety legislation, the role and responsibilities of environmental health officers also known as EHO, hospitality and catering provisions four specific requirements. Unit 2. In Year 11, you will be presented with an exam question which will be answered by you completing and providing your detailed analysis of these topic areas. AC 1.1 right through to 2.4. AC 1.1 describe functions of nutrients in the human body. AC 1.2 compare nutritional needs of specific groups. AC 1.3 explain characteristics of unsatisfactory nutritional intake. AC 1.4 explain how cooking methods impact on nutritional value. AC 2.1 explain the factors to consider when proposing dishes for a menu. AC 2.2 explain how dishes on a menu address environmental issues. AC 2.3 explain how menu dishes meet customer needs. And finally, AC 2.4, plan production of dishes for a menu, which is your time plan, which needs to be in detail because that is what you'll be cooking your practical exam from. You will then be required to submit this work together with photographs of your finished products as evidence of your practical exam. Areas of study in Unit 1 in Year 10 will include these three areas. Techniques used for cooking, boiling, blanching, poaching, braising, steaming, baking, roasting, grilling, griddling, frying, chilling, cooling, hot holding. You will also be taught 
presentation techniques, some of which will include portion control, position on serving the dish, garnishing techniques, creativity as well. The quality of the product you'll be cooking will also be assessed. We'll be looking for smell, aroma, touch, sight, storage and packaging as well. Other cooking skills you'll be taught will also involve the dissecting of the chicken, skinning the chicken and also boning the chicken. You'll also be taught how to skin the fish and bone the fish as well. Pastry making, handling raw meat, filleting the fish, working with yeast, cake making. These are all examples of high skill activities which would improve your grades if mastered, which you'll be encouraged to do so in year 10 as well. Other high skills taught include how to make homemade mayonnaise, homemade pasta, ravioli, spaghetti, lasagna sheets or noodles. Homemade ice cream is another favourite. Baking with complex yeast dough, making rough puff or puff pastry, using advanced garnishing techniques, cooking with professional and industrial appliances. During the summer holidays, I would like you to also engage yourself with some cooking as well as some theory work. Theory work being for you to familiarise yourself with these keywords and some of the subject specific terminologies. Additives, bacillus cereus, barrier creams, best before, blanching, central kitchen, chemical contamination, clostridium botulium, Environmental Health Officer, EHO, Gelling Agents, Gluten, HACCP, Hazard Analysis, Heat Processing, High Risk Food, Humidity, Hygiene, Integrated Cleaning, Lactic Acid Bacteria, Lactose, Listeria, Low Risk Foods, Microbes and Pathogens. Additional summer activities I would advise you to engage yourselves with, apart from practicing and revising your cooking, is to look at some of the listed special dietary needs of the various individuals listed. Think about the dishes that they need that would help them grow and assist with a healthy diet. For example, look at the teenagers, senior citizens and the toddlers and ask yourself what will be best for them to eat what will promote good health and what should they also avoid or eat less of. Completing this task will give you a better understanding about meal planning for specific individuals and also prepare you for your exams in year 11. I do hope this introduction has given you a good insight of this exciting course and look forward to teaching you all in September. Happy holidays everyone and remember to stay safe.